Hello, happy Thursday guys. Welcome to today's fun and free painting. We are painting the super cute gnome. So where are our gnome lovers? You better be joining. We've got this little St. Patty's Day gnome and the rainbow behind. So um, my name's Birdie if you're new here and I run Redbird Designs which is a um, home-based small business and we um, I teach women how to paint and we do DIY crafts and so if you're joining and you're new say hi and let me know where you're watching from I love to see um, how far this video goes and um, all the new faces and all of that so while you're getting joined I'm gonna make sure that everything looks okay on my end make sure my volume and everything is good Here we go. Looks good. So, um, as a small business, I would so appreciate your help in getting um, our little business recognized on Facebook. So if you would give me some thumbs up, hearts on this video, let me know that you like it. Um, uh, go ahead and spread the joy and let others know um, sharing inspiration. Um, sometimes somebody might be stuck and don't know what doesn't know what to paint that day and so seeing this could inspire them um, in their painting journey and then also um, hop on and say hi let me know where you're watching from um, because the more we uh, interact uh, the more Facebook will show my content which then can reach somebody else that needs that inspiration so so, uh, like I said, this is our fun and free paint party. We try and get on here every Thursday at noon and paint just something um, fun and easy. Uh, and I will step you through the process the entire way. We try and keep it to an hour. Sometimes they run a little bit longer. And this one has got a lot of um, detail, so we might be running um, past 1 o'clock. But they are recorded, so if um, you're not able to paint along with us or you run out of time don't worry about it you'll be able to catch the replay later and um, either paint later or uh, finish up later so uh, that's what's great about these videos uh, with the recorded and replay option you're able to go back and hit pause and and go at your own pace so Hi Patty, how are you today? Glad you could join. Are you painting or viewing today? Let's see, okay, so let's get to it. I'm going to uh, go straight to my overhead camera and we will get started painting. So if you're joining along or would like to join along, um, we do have a tracer available for this cute little gnome and a supply list. The link is in the descriptions, description and you can, um, it takes you to my website and from there you're able to um, see all of actually our uh, fun and free paint parties. So choose the one that you want. You can download them all and paint them all that's um, available to you. Each one has a download link. You're gonna click on the download. You put your email address in and it's gonna email you the uh, zip file. The zip file um, is just a uh, compressed file format and you'll have to extract the information from the zip file. It's typically a right click and uncompress or right click extract and then you'll have three PDFs in that zip file and uh, one is your supply list and then you'll have um, a top tracer and a bottom tracer and you can print those out and uh, paint along if you'd like. 
Just watching today, Patty. Okay. I hope you find time to paint later. Um, if this one interests you, there's a lot to choose from. I also want to mention the replays. We are organizing our Facebook page so that it's easier for you to find the replays. So um, if you go to our Facebook page, you know, at the top there's the cover. And depending if you're viewing it on a desktop or a mobile device, uh, you'll be able to find the videos tab. And it's maybe along the top or below the cover uh, picture. Um, the videos tab will then take you to view all my videos and then if you scroll down just a little bit you'll see that there's albums and we've tried to organize our videos so that um, if you're looking for the fun and free these video tutorials on the replay uh, click the fun and free album and they should all be listed there if you have any problems or any questions throughout don't hesitate to message me or throw them in the comments um, I do uh, keep an eye on these videos for comments and things like that, so don't hesitate to add those if you're catching this on the replay. I might not be able to get back to you immediately, but I will do my best to answer you um, in a timely manner. So, Alright, so let's get started on this guy. Um, I've got my tracer here, so when you print out your tracer, you're going to line those up and then tape them down and then you know, center it on the uh, surface that you're painting on. I'm just painting on a 11 by 14 uh, mixed media paper, but you could paint on canvas, you could paint this on wood, whatever you have um, in your uh, mixed media journal, whatever that may be. If you're painting on something bigger or smaller, you can use the scale feature in your PDF viewer and scale these up and down um, to fit your surface. Um, but once you get them out, print it out, tape them together, center it in your, pa uh, in your um, surface. Um, and I want to point out that depending on how your margins are on your printer, it might shift it right or left or up and down. So it's important that when you're getting ready to transfer this image onto your surface, that you take a look at the um, you know, the main element and center that on your surface. You're not going to line up any of your paper edges because of that shift that happens. So um, you can kind of see mine's shifted to the right a little bit and then also down. Um, and there's always going to be kind of a bigger space here at the bottom um, as well. So keep that in mind when you're transferring your image. And then you're going to use um, graphite paper or carbon paper. Graphite paper has a dull side and a shiny side. So when you're transferring, you're going to slide that with the shiny side down on top of your surface. Then you take a pencil or even the back of a um, brush here will work. And then you just transfer or copy over all the line work. I've already done that for this um, painting because it is kind of a bigger painting. There's a lot of detail here, so I'm trying to speed the process up. Um, but when you're finished, you can just slide yours down, or if you have a transfer paper that's big enough, um, obviously you don't have to do that. Um, these can be used so many times um, I have one that has paint on the back and it still works and so uh, make sure to keep those you um, uh, can get many uses out of those so let me just see real quick here before I continue on Let's see we got Patty and hi Mary hi Casey hi Katie welcome uh, thanks for watching today um, let's see what else oh, okay so then we can take this off and um, you can see my lines here. When you're using that transfer paper, try and use a light hand. You don't want to have too dark of lines that are gonna come through your painting, um, forcing you to put multiple coats on to try and cover that up. Um, they are, some transfer paper, carbon paper is erasable. And I found some aren't, so keep that in mind as well. You might want to test it 
um, just to be sure, you know, if you make a mistake, you're able to erase it if need be, but usually the paint will cover it too. All right, we are using a ton of colors on this painting today. I have um, the standard white and black. Remember, these are just suggestions. Use whatever paint colors you have. Mix it up. Do whatever, um, you know, inspires you for those. And then also brands. Uh, you know, if I'm quoting a, like today I'm using a Deco Art Primary Red. You can find a red in Apple Barrel and that will work just fine. Don't get hung up on the brand or the name. Just use the color that you want. Find a great red that suits you. So, we've got a primary red Deco Art Americana. For the orange, I'm using a pumpkin orange from Apple Barrel. For the yellow, I'm using Deco Art Cadmium Yellow. Green, I'm going to use a Apple Barrel New Shamrock, and I think in the supply list I did say a Deco Art Shamrock, and I don't know if I can find it, I'm, but we'll just substitute something else. Um, the blue, I've got Deco Art True Blue for the light purple color. I've got Deco Art Lavender. I'm using a purple pansy uh, apple barrel for the violet, and I think I've coated something else in the uh, supply list, but again, it doesn't matter color-wise, or it doesn't matter brand or name, it's the color that we're looking for. For the sky, I'm going to use blue cotton today, and then let's see what else. We've got this uh, darker orange, it's a cadmium yellow, or cadmium orange for his beard. I'm using a little bit of this King's Gold for the gold um, in the pot here, but not necessary. You could just use yellow and add a little bit of um, some beige to it to darken it up if it's too light. We've got Sunkissed Peach for his nose and then a Territorial Beige for his shoes. So that is our color list today. Like I said, lots of colors today. Brushes, we're going to use a large flat brush. We've got a series of different smaller um, rounds and then a couple flats. Large flat is great for putting a lot of color down on our larger background elements or our bigger elements. I've got this flat here that I'm going to use for the rainbow. You can see it's about the same size as my rainbow stripe, so that's going to allow us to um, really nicely get those rainbow parts in. I've also got another smaller flat here, and then a couple different size rounds. I've got a large, a medium, and then a liner brush. And the liner brush is really just a round brush that's super tiny. I also used a black paint marker to do some outlining on here. Um, you could just use, this is not necessary, you could just use a um, liner brush with black. Okay, so let's get started on this uh, fun painting here. We're going to start with our sky. I'm just going to use that cotton blue. I think I, again, quoted something else in the supply list, but any light colored blue will work. And I'm just going to put my brushes up here out of the way. I'm going to grab my large flap for this. So in this painting, we've got all this top bit here that's going to be blue, and then we've got two small sections down here that is blue as well. Let me see if I can get rid of this uh, shadow that's happening. I had to pull out my light ring today because it's a little bit cloudy out, which then gives me not so great light. I rely too much on that, that sun for good light in my videos but you can't beat it. Okay, so 
So we'll load up our large flat here and remember to make sure to have a lot of paint on there. You don't want it dripping off, but you also want enough to be able to push that paint around and not struggle with putting in nice, smooth brush strokes. If you don't get enough, you'll start to get some brush strokes that are broken up. They're not smooth, they're jagged. and it becomes frustrating when you're painting. So nothing too special with our background. We're just gonna go with a solid blue here. There we go. And if you wanted to, you could add clouds in the background there with um, some white. So this little bit down here, I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's switch to a round. Just a medium sized round will work, but this will give us a little bit more control. It's a smaller brush. We can get into those tighter areas right here. We are using um, some really fun pattern in the grass down here and we could just kind of carry that pattern theme all the way around the painting. You could add maybe little polka dots in the sky, white polka dots or even just really light colored blue polka dots and have those act as clouds. So you could really have some fun with just adding different patterns to some of the bigger elements like the hat and the, the body. So you can see here we've got this little heart or grass uh, pattern here and then in the beard we're doing swirls. So you could really just have some fun with adding patterns to other elements as well. Let me see if there's any comments. Make sure if you're joining, um, let me know if you're painting along, if you're just watching now and we'll paint later. And let me know where you're watching from. All right, so our background is done. Let's start on that rainbow. start with red. I'm going to grab that flat brush that's about the size of my rainbow stripes. It's going to help me get that paint in there and we get nice even lines with that. So I'm going to start it at the hat here. The gentle pressure just drag it down along that line on that arc. If you had a flat brush that wasn't this exact size, you could still use it and maybe just do two, um, two brush strokes. Or if you had, um, yeah, like something smaller, let me grab one. So something like this. And then also remember, um, if you're using a smaller brush, if you're able to uh, apply a fair amount of pressure. The more pressure, the more the bristles spread out, so you can kind of make that brush cover a little bit more. So if it's fairly narrow, if you apply a pressure, you can kind of get it to widen out as well. So I'm going to go the other way with this, using my arm to get that nice sweepy motion. And my hat is black, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring that brush stroke all the way into the hat, knowing that as I cover this with black, it's going to cover that line up anyways. That eliminates me trying to come back the other way with this and, and brush it back and try and clean that up. I get a nice, um, I'll clean that up with the black there. All right, let's move on to the next color. The 
orange in there. Gently dragging that around, being careful not to drag it through any red paint. Okay, and I'm going to do the other side. Now, orange is a very um, translucent color. It's very hard to find a very um, opaque orange. Which means that you're just going to have to apply some multiple coats on that. Um, you know, I can still see some of my uh, transfer here, my traced lines here. Um, and that is because it's just a translucent color. More different colors will um, give you a more solid coverage. Some require multiple coats. And then it also depends on the brand too. Um, some brands cover better than others. And it all depends on the pigment in the painting. All right, so we'll do yellow. Yellow is another color that will require a couple coats. Okay. Now we're going to do green and I'm going to get a lot of green out because we do have some surfaces that have, we have the grass to fill in and we will also fill in his body. So we'll start with the rainbow with this flat brush here. When you're trying to get a nice straight line with your brush, it's best to try and go a little bit faster than slower. You might be tempted to just kind of slow your brush stroke down when in fact it's better to speed it up just a little bit. When we slow down, we tend to shake a little bit more. And when we're going a little bit faster we can get a smoother line okay so here instead of pulling my brush all the way into the hat because right here is the band of the hat I don't want to um, paint over that band it's a yellow band and it would take a lot to try and cover up this green. So I am going to go the other way with it. I'm going to just start my brush right at that band and drag it down and meet up with my line there. Okay. And then we're going to come down and let's 
fill in this grass area while we've got the green on our brush. You could also switch to a the large flat for this, but this is a pretty large flat. I'll be able to cover this area fairly quickly. So I did want to mention, um, we do, I, I, I said it at the beginning, but I do teach women how to paint um, through a membership, and I just wanted to um, let you guys know that if you're interested in, you know, maybe taking your painting um, an, the next step, taking it to the next step, or you're looking for joining a group of like-minded painters um, or maybe you're just looking for some extra inspiration or a place to confidently share your work and your journey in painting. Um, our online membership, it's a kind of a VIP membership, uh, is Redbird Retreat and we will be opening that membership up in May for new members. Right now it's closed. It's typically closed throughout the year just so that I can spend uh, my time in that group um, giving them my time there instead of trying to mark it all year long. And it is just a private group where um, it's a safe environment that you can share and be in a group with like-minded artists who uh, might be on that same boat with you. Sometimes um, sharing your art with maybe friends or family even can be difficult because they might not understand and so this group allows you that freedom from judgment and um, we do exclusive paintings once a week we do about three paintings a month and we have a Q&A and it allows us to share and encourage one another and so if you're interested in that um, head over to redbirddesigns.com and you'll see a link for Redbird Retreat. You can join the wait list and when we open back up, I will um, send out an email and let everyone know. So, I just wanted to uh, mention that since it's getting close to opening up. Okay, so we've got our, our, we've got our green grass here that's painted. And I'm using the same green for his body, except I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it. I'm going to tone it down just so that we have a little bit of difference between the grass and his outfit here. So I've added a little bit of white to my palette. Let me pull that over so we can see that. And I'm going to just mix some off to the side here. Just get something just a shade lighter. There we go. So we've got just a lighter shade here with that white added, and we're going to use that for his body. So we woke up to snow this morning, which was not fun, but par to the course where we live. We always get the spring teaser, super nice weather, pulling out our summer clothes, thinking about planting and 
being outdoors and then Mother Nature in Montana goes just joking. There we go. All right. He's coming along. All right, let's move back to our rainbow. We're gonna let this dry. We'll come back in and add our little detail there in a little bit. So what do we need? We need blue. Still using that medium flat brush. Be a little careful up here. And I'll probably, let's see, I'm going to just finish out this stripe here on the rainbow. And then I'm going to grab my small or medium round and kind of fill in up there around his hat. As we get further down the rainbow, we're losing. Um, the ability to just pull that color right into his hat because now we are dealing with his beard and his body so I'm going to pull this color up as far as I can go with my flat and then we're going to switch brushes so I'm going to go grab my medium round here and kind of cut into those areas with my smaller brush. If you accidentally take your color into a different area where you don't want to, that's the great thing about painting. Everything is fixable. We're just gonna let it dry and you can come back over it with another color or um, the same color if I were to pull one of my colors into the rainbow above or below we just let it dry and then come in and cover it with that color so everything is fixable in painting okay we're gonna get our purple out go back to my flat here around the pot of gold I am going to um, stay away from that with my flat. I'm going to start a little bit away from that and then I'll come back with that um, round and get that detail in there. Grab that round, we'll finish off this little detailed area here. Get around his beard. There we go. All right, then violet. I'm using that purple pansy from Apple Barrel, just a darker purple. So do we have anybody who's Irish watching? Do you guys decorate for the holiday?
celebrate. And if so, what do you do? What kind of traditions? So this purple pansy is a color that is, you would think covers well, but it's one of those colors that does not. I think dark color should cover well, but this dark violet typically needs a couple coats. Hi, Sarah Lynn. Hi, Colleen. Thanks for watching. Let's see who else. Donna, Elizabeth. Hello, hello. All right, so we're going to let the rainbow dry, and if um, I might come back in and touch up maybe the uh, green, um, but and then the yellow, there's a couple spots there that I want to touch up, but other than that, oh, and the the violet or the dark violet will need to get touched up. All right, so let's get some black out and we're just going to work our way down the painting and start filling in this uh, gnome here. So for the hat, I'm going to use the flat that I was using for the rainbow. You could also use your large flat or a round, whatever you're comfortable using. So at the beginning, I do mention that, you know, colors are just a suggestion. Uh, you can use whatever colors you have on hand, whatever colors you want the reds that strike to you, the blues or whatever that may be, but I also want to mention that the brushes I use are also just a suggestion. The more you paint, the more you become familiar with the brushes and, and how they uh, perform, what kind of brush stroke you can get out of them, and you'll slowly start to become um, have favorites. So my favorite brush, the one that I typically turn to most, is a round. Um, you know, so if I suggest a brush and you give it a try and it's just not, doesn't feel right or you're not able to get um, the detail that you want, Please feel free to experiment with brushes, do something else, use your favorite. There are no rules when painting. That's the great thing. Alright, we've got the hat, or the top here, so I'm going to also do this, uh, the uh, brim. And my flat, if I were to hold it like this, you can see it's way wider than my brim, right? So I'm going to use the brush in an upright manner, creating, I'm just using the tip this way. And I'm just going to use a couple different strokes back and forth. You could also grab a smaller flat, so let's see if I have one that matches the size. So I could use this flat, it's about the same size as the brim of my hat. Or you could just use a round and again just use that to fill the space. Just experiment if you're not familiar with brushes, just experiment with different brushes and and how they're going to give you the look that you want. Like I said, after practice and after a few times, you'll develop your favorites, you'll develop 
how those brushes perform or determine how they perform. All right, let's get that brim filled in. I'm gonna go back to that larger flat. Not the largest one, but the one we used the rainbow for. And just go straight across. Now I am going to go right over this little shamrock on his hat because I know the green is going to cover that yellow fairly well and that way I don't have to try and cut around there and paint around it. I'll just layer the green right on top of that yellow. Alright, we can't fill this in quite yet. Um, we're going to let that yellow dry. We're going to move on down. Let's fill the nose in. I'm going to use the sun-kissed peach. Another option would be to use the red and add some um, white to it and make a little pink nose or um, you could do red, orange, and white and kind of get that same color. You can get a really light coral color or a peach color. You could also take a brown and add white to it and get a tan color. You can use whatever color you want. I am using my medium sized round for this process here because it is a smaller element, gives me a little more control. And then we also don't forget about his little hand over here, it's just sitting by his side. All right, for the beard, I did choose a darker orange, so I've got this. <coughs> Cadmium, uh, cat, I keep wanting to say cadmium yellow. It's a cadmium orange. And if you didn't have a um, darker orange, you could definitely make one. If you had just that lighter, bright orange, you could add a little black to it with maybe just a little red just to give it kind of a more red tint and could definitely mix your own. So next week we are going to go live in our clipboard collections group with a uh, our monthly clipboard painting. Um, and you might have been invited to that already, but if not, it's a group under our Facebook page that um, is just another way to um, get together and paint. This one is geared more towards quote art. So each month we go live with a new quote and just an easy painting behind it. Um, that one is for developing more hand lettering skills. As, as well as, you know, just some basic painting, but um, you're welcome to join us there. The group is free, and all of the information is in the group about when we're going to go live, and the supply lists are in the group, and the tracers, and the art is done on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper or cardstock I should say any heavyweight paper will work but the idea is to create art that we can hang on a clipboard and um, view all month long 
we get the benefits of painting together and then the benefits of just seeing our art and displaying that. It can be on a clipboard. It doesn't have to be on a clipboard. Obviously, you could display it on a cork board or your fridge or whatever that may be. Here we go. All right. So let's move on to the um, gold in the pot. I am using that King's Gold from Apple Barrel. It's just a darker, more mustardy color. You could always just use yellow here. So right now I'm just filling in with a layer of that yellow. I'm not worried about trying to uh, brush in pieces of gold. We're going to use our paint marker for that. So all we need to do is get that color in there. And then let's get that pot filled in. I'm still just using my um, medium round for this. So on mine, I've left his socks white with some stripes, so I'm not going to paint those. And then the, the shoes are that territorial beige. Um, so let's just get these stripes in. And I'm just going to use that large, well, let's see. Yeah, we'll use a round for this. You could use a small flap for this to get a nice straight line. Um, you could sketch in your lines. You could do any sort of design you want on your socks. I just love this design. It reminds me of Charlie Brown. With that orange and that yellow. So I'm going to look at going about midway up. And I'm just going to do a brush stroke across. Not very thick. I'm going to go about midway in and then I'm going to pick up my brush and start it the other way and connect those two in the middle. And actually we can just connect it with the other sock there actually. There we go. And give it a quick wash. We're going to go grab some yellow and do a little, small little stripe above and below. And we will use our liner brush for this. That's our smallest round. Just a quick little stripe above, below. And it's not perfect. I'm not worried about it kind of fading in and out. It might pick up some of that orange. That's okay. All right. We're going to get our last color, I think, on our palette here. Going back to that medium round. 
He'll get his shoes filled in. The shoes remind me of Charlie Brown as well. And I was trying to think the other day when I was painting this, if there was, you know, there's the Charlie Brown Christmas and there's Charlie Brown, um, the Great Pumpkin for Halloween. I think there's a Thanksgiving special. I couldn't remember if there was one where they did St. Patty's Day. Easter, there was one for Easter. All right, so we have got every bit painted. Now we can go back with some fun accents, some fun patterns, and really make this painting pop. Okay, so like I said, you um, I didn't do it in my original, but I think it would be super cute to put some polka dots up in the sky. Um, white or some clouds that would be really cute um, you could really just have a lot of fun doing even just small little patterns going down whether they're polka dots or dashes or hearts or stars and of the lucky charm rainbow there um, and kind of just take it another whole nother level in that in the painting all right so if we're looking Starting at the top, um, we do still have to fill in this shamrock, so I will start by doing that and then we'll get into some detail work here. Forgot I had this little guy here, and I also have a shamrock on the pot that I'm going to start filling in. So I covered up, I don't even know if the shamrock was part of the tracer, but um, a quick way for a shamrock is just four circles or you could do three if you're doing a three-leaf clover so I'm just gonna put four circles right next to each other and then fill it in then we start in um, the center and just drag a line out for the stem All right, while we're working with grain, um, let's put a second coat in on our grain here. There's just some areas. It might not need it in the entire length here, but just some areas that might need just a little touch up or fill in to give it a nice green color. going to all depend on your paint and the color green you choose and how thick you put your color down. You might need a second coat, you might not. So at any point if you're painting along and you find that whether it be your blue or your purple or your red needs a second coat, hit the pause button, put your second coat on and then um, resume the video because every color is going to be a little bit different. All right, so um, let's work on this grass. We've got this light green that we created for his uh, body, for his outfit, and that is what I'm gonna use to create this pattern in the grass. And so this pattern is just a bunch of these. Um, I'm using my uh, medium flat, should I go smaller? Let's go smaller. I'm gonna go find a, almost like a liner brush and it's kind of dry, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this lighter green. There we go. And to start with, I wanna give him a little mound to stand on. So I am going to create just an arc right under his feet in this light green. Kind of gives us that illusion that he's standing on something 
He's not just floating around on the grass. He's just got this little mound to stand on. And then we will start with our pattern. So our pattern I use is a V or a small heart. So I start with my V brush stroke on one side. I turn my brush, come down and create that little V. And I'm not too concerned about creating a super um, rigid pattern. I'm just gonna have just go quickly, let it be a little bit random. If they're off a little bit, that's okay. Some might be a little bit bigger. I kind of am doing a, a little bit of a pattern where I am staggering them a little bit. We go all the way along the back here. And then what I'm going to do is kind of go in between the two I just, or the set I just put down. I'm going to come back between the two I just put down and there we go it looks so easy when you do it thanks Patty it is a little bit of practice and um, it's really easy it's so relaxing and so fun to do So let's grab some of this territorial beige and add just a little bit of detail to our shoes. We're just going to work our way up now. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of black and darken that beige up just a little bit. Black is very potent, you don't need a lot, so when you're mixing or trying to get a darker color, always start really small with that black and work your way up. So we've got just a little bit of a darker color here, it's not much. And I want to just go around maybe the bottom of his shoe, darken that area, and then maybe up around the top here. We've got this little curvy bit, kind of where the two shoes meet, and then maybe at the top over here. Okay. Alright, so for the body, we're also going to add a little bit of dark in the body. We want to create some shadows so that it doesn't look so flat. So we're going to take that green, I'm going to pull some aside here, grab a little bit of that black, and I want to darken it up just a titch. Okay. And then I'm going to come around the bottom of his body where there would be that natural shadow along the bottom. Okay. Just brush that in. And then I want to put some under his beard and under the pot. There'd be a natural shadow there. I'm going to come around the beard. And then on his arm back there, his arm's kind of tucked back there, so we want to put that in the shadow as well. Now, if you've got too dark of a color or it, it, it's too much of a contrast or you don't like it, you can just go in and grab some of that regular green, dip right in. You don't have to clean your brush. And you can kind of just blend that in just a little bit or lighten it up if it got too dark, just adding that color that original green right back in there. So 
so I just grabbed some of that color and just blended that dark right in there. I'm just kind of brushing it back and forth, blending those colors together. Alright, so let's go up and add that fun swirl to his beard. We want to use a small liner brush for this. And I will use the pumpkin orange, the orange we used in the um, rainbow. And one thing I want to point out to you is what, uh, what makes acrylics great can also be a hassle sometimes. So acrylics dry super fast which allows us to complete paintings in a timely manner, um, but it also then, um, the paint on your palette will dry fast. So if you're trying to do a detail or a small um, thin line or um, lettering or anything like that, and your paint has been sitting on your palette for the entire time, um, make sure to add a little bit of water to it because it will start to get tacky and thick and create globs on your painting. So this has been sitting here for a while. I just dipped my brush into some water and I'm mixing it around. Um, and if it's beyond repair, go ahead and just squirt a brand new little dollop on your uh, palette and start over. All right, so I'm gonna just start somewhere and just kinda create a little curl there. We're gonna work around his beard here and create fun little swirls. And go the other way over here. Kind of mix it up a little bit. Going different ways. Maybe have some small ones up here. Okay. All right. So I want to put a second coat on this little shamrock up here. He's pretty light. Kind of hard to see. And while I'm doing that, I might as well put my second coat down here. grab our white so we've got our liner brush and we're gonna start adding some highlights to things I'm gonna use white for that and my liner brush and these are just fun quick little brush strokes here and there to highlight the tops of elements so for example I've got a highlight up here I'm gonna start at the corner I'm just gonna do a quick brush stroke pick it up let it kind of fade away I'm gonna come the other way with it remember um, speed can be your friend here to get a nice straight line. The slower you go, the more shake we have in our hand. Let's add one to the top of the band there. And also on the rim here. Okay. We'll do the top of his nose. He's got a little glint on his nose from the sun. We'll go around the beard. And around the pot of gold here. His arm. A little bit on his hand. And that side of the body. Tops of the shoes down here. And then I'm going to add some shoelaces, so little X's. So wherever you think you just need a little bit of light, um, go ahead and add that into your painting. Add some to the mound. Maybe along the back here of the horizon line. 
You could add some white in the rainbow. But you can see how then that really helped that shem or that gnome kind of pop off the page. It kind of gave you some areas to look for. So it's really important to have some dark areas, some mid-tone, and then those light areas. Um, I think really make that painting have some dimension, some texture. It's not so flat. Okay, so before we move on to the um, using that paint marker to kind of just even define some more areas, let's, um, I just want to put a second coat on my dark purple here before I forget. We're almost done with this painting. And if you are painting this, please share. I would love to see your version of this. Everyone paints um, differently. Everyone has their own creative, unique style, which is the great thing about these. Everyone is going to be a little bit different. And it is so fun to see um, your spin on it. So make sure to share if you paint along. All right, we are down to the last step, guys. We are just going to add some um, outlining. I am using the Posca paint pen. You can get these on Amazon. There are a ton of different paint pens out there that you can get. You can get at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, Walmart. Um, doesn't matter the brand. The only thing I want to point out to you though is when you go to purchase a paint pen that you take a look at the tip and make sure that the tip is the size that you want because you can get really fat tips and fine tips and all of that. So that's important um, when you are purchasing those to just kind of take a look at that. Keep that in mind. All right. So let's go over the beard to start with. And one thing also to note when you're using a paint pen to highlight or outline elements in your painting, you want to make sure that the painting is dry because you'll ruin the filaments in your paint pen if you try and go through wet paint. And you would think that wet on wet wouldn't harm it, but it does. It Kind of breaks down those filaments and does not like it trust me okay so I went around the beard I went around his arm around the hand and then if you noticed I came up with this line here to help define his arm and his body there so I started up here and then went around the body we've got that horizon line down there we're going to draw a line between the socks and then also between the shoes down here. And when you're outlining, you don't necessarily have to connect lines. I think it adds to that whimsical feel where it's only partially outlined. Um, maybe your outlining breaks up a little bit. And also feel free to add some fun um, maybe dots or... Um, X's or O's or hearts or whatever you want in your outlining every once in a while maybe you add a, a little pattern um, again it just adds to that fun whimsical feel Let's add some out, uh, defining lines to the shoelaces there and I think that's it oh we have the um, shamrock up here we'll do I'm going to help define that in the band. Okay, and then the um, pot of gold is our last little bit here. So I'm going to just draw some circles kind of all the way around where we have that defining um, pattern there, and then add some whole pieces in here and then maybe just some half pieces that are peeking out from the 
pot and then that's it we really don't need to define anything else in there they can be separated like that and then let's just add a couple highlight lines to the tops of that gold just a little dollop of white paint on the top there and there we go oh i forgot his nose Get his nose. Okay. I think we got everything. So there is our St. Patty's Day Gnome Lucky. Again, if you do paint along at a later time, I encourage you to share your work. Um, Sharing your work, uh, as scary as it is, um, does help us in building confidence. And what you might think is terrible art is um, beautiful in others' eyes. So I encourage you to share. And um, even if you just want to share with me and send me a message, um, and show what you've done. I would love to see it. Um, I won't share it out unless I ask. So if you send me a private message and you just want to share what you've done, um, I encourage that. Absolutely. Um, and if um, I might come back and ask you if I can share it to others. Um, and I won't share unless you approve of that. So this is it guys make sure that um let me just bring it up so you can see it's kind of hard to see the swirls in his beard in this light but there's lots of color super bright fun little gnome some pattern going on in there i just love this one so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find time to paint, to um, explore your creativity. It's very therapeutic. It allows you to escape and um, just get lost in that painting process. So take time for yourself, recharge um, with painting. Let's see if I see anything else. Make sure I didn't have, miss anybody's comments or questions. All right, guys. Well, I will let you go. I didn't see anything. Um, again, thanks for watching, and be sure to um, you know give me those thumbs up or hearts if you like this video, um, and spread the joy um, to help inspire others um, who might just need something fun to paint for a night and need some inspiration. So. Thanks again, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye.